The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Oosteros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Dr. Bin Fu, who is a research scientist in the wheat area with the Canadian Grain Commission. How is it going today? Very good. How are you? I'm doing great. So we are here today to talk about falling number. So before we get too into uh, the depths of research and such, can you talk first about what is falling number and how it is determined? Okay. The uh, we all know damp or raining weather just before or during harvest can cause the undesirable germination of mature wheat kernels. When wheat begins to sprout, it produces an enzyme called alpha amylase. The elevation of alpha amylase activity can significantly reduce wheat quality by degrading the starch during food processing. The, the impact of a sprout damage on wheat quality depends on the alpha amylase activity. The higher the activity, the more the quality loss. And the falling number is the internationally accepted method for measuring the alpha amylase activity indirectly and as an indicator of quality loss. The number is the time in seconds it takes for the plunge to fall through a heated and a gelatinized slurry of a ground wheat meal and a water mix mixture. You can log on CGC website, grainscanada.gc.ca, and search for procedures for fully number test. It will show step by step of the test with pictures and with a detailed explanation. So how do grain um, companies actually measure the falling uh, number? And is there, like you, you said, there is a standard test, but there seems to be a lot of differenti, like it, 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 there's differences between different companies. So what is the standard way to do it? Uh, the falling number test is actually fairly standard. In the, net, in the 1960s, uh, Hackberger developed the method and the Perton commercialize the operators. So there are three international standards today for fully number testing. One is the AACC International Method 56-81. That is very widely used in North America. And also there's a method called ICC standard, International uh, Serial Science and Technology Association, ICC method number 107. And there's also ISO method, ISO 3093. All the three methods are very, very similar, uh, all based on the Hamburg procedure with the Perton instrument. And all using seven grams of ground whole wheat meal suspended in 25 ml of water. So that's only very minor variation, but overall it's a, the, the method is very clear and very standardized. And all three of these are used uh, to this day? Uh, mostly, majority uh, company in, in, in North America using the AACC uh, international method. But the, uh, all the three methods are very similar. And you ask about why there are some variations in terms of falling number of the same sample or uh, same uh, lot, whatever. So there's uh, uh, a few factors can influence the falling number value. One, of course, we all know is a sampling. The sample has to be well mixed and need to be representative of the field, the bin, or the truckload. So the sampling is the biggest variation. 
No, uh, because uh, just one kernel in a few hundred gram of a sample can make a difference in phony number, one sprouted kernel. So it's the sampling is the key. And uh, there's also other factors. How you grind the sample. You know, the phony number test is only need uh, less than 20 gram of the whole meal. But you actually need to grind, recommended to grind, uh, grind 250 to 300 gram of all uh, wheat. So you have a la uh, much larger uh, wheat sample to grind than the, what is really needed. Just make sure it's representative and uniform. And also the grind type and the seed size. You know, you want to make sure the particle size generated from the test are in line with what the method specified. And you need to have a correct amount of uh, uh, the uh, wheat meal uh, weighted and a correct amount of water dispensed to make the, the suspension. And also how you shake the tubes to uniformly suspend the whole meal in water can also influence the test. And even the altitude of the lab doing the test will have an impact on the falling number because the altitude impact the, 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 uh, the, uh, the temperature for, 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 for water boiling point, right? But in, in, in Western Canada, that's usually not a problem of attitude. Actually, the method specify you need to adjust the falling number if the altitude is uh, above 310 meters. So, yeah. Another one is, uh, you know, I will say a good uh, falling number, you need to have a, at least a duplicate result. Do a test do in duplicate because of the variation of all the factors we just discussed. And uh, I also uh, recommend for lab doing the, uh, the falling number test, have a routine check with a reference sample to make sure, you know, they are uh, in, uh, the, the instruments and all the operation uh, perform uh, well. Yeah. So as varieties are changing in wheat, are you seeing any uh, trends in Canada as far as falling number goes? Uh, you know, the, we, we know the uh, harvest condition, right, is a dominant factor determine the falling number for any new crop. But the genetics also play a significant role in reducing the damage caused by unfavorable weather condition during harvest. And uh, improving the sprout resistance has been an important objective for wheat breeding programs in Canada for many years. And the forty number, also amylograph peak viscosity, uh, which is the most sensitive test for indirectly mesh, measure the alpha, uh, alpha amylase activity are the primary quality parameters in weight variety registration trials. So any new varieties have to be equal or better than the checks for falling number or, or the amylograph peak viscosity. So the, the, the sprout resistance is a major breeding target and also during the registration trial, those two parameters, falling number and amylograph peak viscosity are, are primarily uh, uh, parameters also very important to make sure the new variety released has a good sprout resistance. Okay, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, just the one thing, you know, the degree of a quality loss is not just depending on the, uh, the, the falling number. Also depending on the process used in food processing how you process the food. I just give you an example. Uh, same degree of a sprout damage, or same falling number, has much less impact on the past processing quality of dune wheat. 
than the baking quality of a red spring wheat. So based on this scientific evidence, amber durian has more relaxed tolerance than red spring for sprout damage in the CGC official grain grading guide. And even for, uh, for the bread making process, if you're using a longer fermentation, then the impact will be more significant than uh, a baking process of a shorter fermentation. So it's uh, impact on the functionality, also the food processing uh, related. Okay, it was very great to talk to you today. I appreciate all your information, Dr. Fu. Thank you, Carla. Talk to you next time. Yes, thank you.